following video describes the use of geoids in GCS 900. We will briefly cover the history of geoid support in GCS 900 and the current implementation. I will start with a very short explanation of the term geoid. A geoid is a surface of equal gravitational forces where the water does not flow in any direction. Basically, you can think of it as an extension of the sea through the continents. We will start with a reminder on how geoid support work in GCS 100 versions up to 11.20. To be able to use a geoid model, the designs had to be created in SiteVision Office software. For geoid support, SiteVision Office tried to fit an inclined plane over the geoid grid model. SiteVision Office had a hardwired 3 mm tolerance, which means the maximum allowed vertical distance between the two surfaces, meaning the geoid surface and the inclined plane, could only be 3 mm or less. This worked for small areas only. On larger areas, the error limit was often exceeded and SiteVision Office threw an error. In fact, you perhaps noticed that this wasn't real geoid support. In version 11.20, GCS 100 started to support real geoid models on the machine, however, with some major limitations which were. Geoid models resided inside the receivers, and only small geoid subgrids were supported. This was because the geoid subgrid was embedded as a page in the configuration file, and this caused a serious memory limitation. The size limit for geoid files was just one kilobyte. The size limit increased in later receiver versions. However, most geoids are larger than 1 or even 128 kilobytes. Therefore, they had to be subgridded, which meant that in TBC, the user had to cut off the grid for the area of interest, meaning the design that is being worked on. And this implemented additional work and added complexity. This slide just lists the software and firmware requirements for the embedded GeoEats subgrid support. For the embedded subgrid support in GCS 100 versions 11.20 to 12.5, certain settings had to be made in either SiteVision Office or Trimble Business Center software, as shown on this slide. This slide is for reference only and illustrates a little bit the complexity of creating embedded GEOID subgrids for the user. Finally, version 1260 of GCS 100 introduced the support for full GEOID models on the machine. The difference from previous versions is that now multiple GEOID models can reside in the control box. This allows to load large geoid grids and is very similar to the way SiteWorks and SCS900 support geoids. And along with geoid grid support, 1260 also introduced support for other grids, like snake grids, shift grids, and datum grids. Apart from running version 1260 on the control box, there are other requirements for the full geoid support. They are the coordinate system information must now be provided to GCS 100 in a CAL instead of a configuration file. The coordinate system database current.csd, which is being used by GCS 100, must contain the GeoEat and coordinate system information. Therefore, it is an advantage to run the latest GCS version, since the firmware embedded current.csd will also be the latest available version and contain the most recent coordinate systems. The MS receivers must run the indicated minimum firmware versions. And MS990 receivers are no longer supported. CAL files are required for full GE support, and usually they reside in the design folder. They contain coordinate system information, including a GeoEat grid reference but not the GEOID grid itself. This is a separate file. CAL files are ASCII format. They are the same format as DC files, and they can be opened on a PC with the DC file editor tool. 
GeoEat files in Trimble's GGF format must reside in the GeoData directory on the control box. When loading a design, GCS100 will look up the GeoEat grid and any other grid file which is referenced in the CAL file in this GeoData directory. If found, the design will load. If not, an error message will be thrown. Important to note that in the CAL file, GeoEat files are referenced by their internal name, which is found in the header of the GGF file, and not by their file name. Internal name and file name might be different. There are different ways of creating designs with GeoEat support. How to do that depends on your workflow. Example. If using TBC without using construction data workflow, the following steps are required. Create a project, define a coordinate system which includes a GeoEat model and import or create a design. Then select export, construction, machine, job site, design exporter. Here it is important that you select in the export settings the software version 1260 or higher. Then TBC will export an SVD and SVL and CAL file together. The latter will reference a GeoEat file. This GeoEat model must then be manually copied onto the USB stick into the machine control data GeoData directory. When using the construction data workflow in TBC, perform the following steps. Create a project in TBC, define the coordinate system, which includes a GeoEat model, import or create a design. Then create a controller, important that it must be version 12.6 or higher. After that, create a job site, assign the machine and create a design. TBC now will create a sync directory. The sync directory will contain a design folder and a GeoData folder. The design folder will contain the SVD, SVL and CAL files and the GeoData folder will contain the required GeoEat file. After that, copy everything onto the USB stick. You can also use the TBC to Works Manager workflow. Again, the steps are create a project, define a coordinate system which includes a GeoEat model, import, create a design, create a controller, version 12.6 or higher. Then create a job site and assign the machine, create a design. Then export everything to Works Manager. This will export the SVD, SVL and CAL file into a design. However, no GGF file, meaning GeoEat grid file, will be exported to Works Manager. The GeoEat file must be added manually in the Works Manager settings. A coordinate system database file named current CSD is always required to be able to process coordinate systems. GCS 900 contains the latest current CSD file in use by Trimble by the time of firmware release. However, an updated or customized current CSD can be added. The rules are the firmware file SG3 or SG4 will install the latest current CSD into a system folder that is not accessible to the user. To use an updated or customized current CSD file, include it in the GeoData folder on the USB stick and transfer it to the system GeoData folder. If there is a valid current CSD file in the system GeoData folder, then this will be used and the default current CSD will be ignored. But if there is no valid current CSD in the system GeoData folder, then the default embedded current CSD file will be used. When you delete a customized current CSD, then the design will be unloaded and the default current CSD will be loaded. And this concludes the video. Thank you for your attention.